Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration. Worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. Worship the I am that I am. The unchangeable changer. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless him who reigns forever. Give him glory for all he has done for you since the beginning of this year. Praise his holy name for what he did for you in January. Magnify his holy name for what he did for you in February. Glorify his holy name for what he did for you last month. Bless his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be magnified. Praise him for what he's going to do for you tonight. Praise him for what he will do for you this month. Magnify his holy name for all the wonderful testimonies we heard. Because your own testimony is going to be bigger and better and greater. Praise his holy name. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Praise Him. There's no one like Him. He is our Father. Our Redeemer, our Healer, our Provider, our Promoter, our All in All. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. It's worthy, worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I have a Father, Almighty Father. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I have a Father, hallelujah. I have a Father, hallelujah. Almighty Father, He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Father of fathers, the father of all mothers, the father of all children, the savior of the whole world, the one who can do what nobody else can do, the God of miracles, signs, and wonders, glory be to your holy name. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. 
Thank you for what you did in January. Thank you for what you did in February. Thank you especially for what you did last month. Thank you for what you're about to do today. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. In a very special way, Lord God Almighty, in all our lives tonight, let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let there be wonders. And just let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you. You may please be seated. You may turn to your right and to your left and prophesy to your neighbor and say, God will send you signs and wonders tonight. Now, those who are born in the month of April, they are the only one to stand now. My Father, my God, I commit all your children born in the fourth month of the year into your hands. From the four corners of the world, send help to them. From the east, send help to them. From the west, send help to them. From the north, send help to them. From the south, send help to them. From all the pillars of heaven, send help to them. And give them a brand new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Those of you born in April, shout another hallelujah. God bless you. You may please be seated. Next month, by the grace of God, the Holy Ghost service theme will be Open Doors. The Almighty God will open doors to everybody here tonight and then let all workers remember that they'll be having a meeting after next month's Holy Ghost service. I want to thank the Almighty God for all my children who had ministered tonight beginning from the very small ones to the one who gave the sermon. They, uh, they've all done excellently well. I think we should give the Lord a big round of applause for all of them. Uh, definitely, by the grace of God, our future is assured. When we see the teenagers ministering so powerfully. I learned a lot from the preacher. He tells us that the first encounter with Jesus Christ will turn you to a wonder. And then he tells us that the baptism in the Holy Spirit will help sustain the wonder. And moved on to say that evangelism it's essential because there will be no need for empowerment unless there's an assignment. That is a very beautiful one, sir. I appreciate that one. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause once again for these wonderful children. Tonight, we'll be as brief as possible because 
we still have to anoint our children, especially for the great task ahead of them. Our text is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. And while you are opening your Bibles, could you help me put your hands together for the choir? They seem to be getting better day by day. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause, even to our choir. It was beautiful tonight. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18 says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. My son who spoke before me had already defined signs and wonders beautifully. I would just want to define signs and wonders in the language of the market woman, the language that uh, even illiterates we understand. Sign simply means proof, evidence. In Second King chapter twenty, verse one to eleven, Second Kings chapter twenty. Verse 1 to 11. When God told Ezekiah that he would live and not die, and I decree tonight to all the children, including myself, you shall live and you will not die. Ezekiah requested from the prophet, give me a sign, give me an evidence, give me a proof that like you have said, I'm going to live for another 15 years. And then God gave him a sign. And the son went backward instead of forward for a certain period of time. What is a wonder? A wonder, like somebody said, is that which causes you to wonder. <laughs> A wonder is that which causes you to open your mouth wide involuntarily and find it difficult to close. A wonder is a happening beyond expectation, beyond imagination. Like in Daniel chapter 6, from verse 19 to 27. Daniel 6, 19 to 27. Daniel 6, 19 to 27. Tells us that a man spent a night in the den of hungry lions and came out alive. That is a wonder. In the testimonies we heard tonight, there were many wonders. 
A woman had been barren for 32 years. And God answered her, that is a wonder. A boy spent 15 minutes, a child spent, is it 15 or 30 minutes? 30 minutes inside a river could not be reached, but the ocean vomited the child. That is a wonder. You see, I'm beginning again to sense that because so many great miracles are happening among us, we are no longer paying too much attention to them. I don't know how anybody could hear some of these testimonies and remain seated. When you see what only the Almighty God can do, if you stay in the river for five minutes, you are supposed to die. A boy was there for 30 minutes. A woman was barren for 32 years. Uh, somebody touched the dress that somebody else wore, and miracles began to happen. Why don't you shout hallelujah to God? You will receive your own wonder tonight. Children are, oh, please be seated. God bless you. Children are proofs, evidence that God is a miracle working God, that God is a covenant keeping God, that God is a defender of the defenseless, that God is a burden bearer, and we can go on and on. When they brought little children to him, and some people were driving away the children, and the children were defenseless, it, it was adults saying, get away from here. Jesus turned around and rebuked those people, and said, hey, leave the little ones alone. Bring them close to me. He defended them. The defender of the defenseless will defend somebody here tonight. He carried them in his arms. God is a carrier. He can carry you and carry your body. It can carry you and carry your sorrow. It can carry you and carry your problems. Provided you make yourself as little as a child. God is a carrier. Children is evidence. When I lost my son last year, and I was deeply in sorrow. I got a text from one of my daughters that suddenly turned the tide. What she wrote was simply this, Daddy, let God carry you. That changed everything. Is anybody here tonight with any problem? May the Almighty God carry you. Not only did he carry them, he laid his hand on them. Gently, as a sign of love. 
Children are evidence that God is a God of love. And we know that if he loves you, you become more than a conqueror. I've always said it, and when I say it, people argue with me. God loves me more than anybody else. Do you agree? I know you won't agree. When I tell you that God loves me more than you, what do you reply? Which means we all agree he loves us. And if he loves us, we are more than conquerors. From children, we see the evidence that it doesn't matter how great the forces against us, we shall overcome. How many conquerors are here today? Let me hear you shout triumphantly. But tonight, because I want to be brief, I want to look at some children in the Bible that are clearly signs from God. Let me start with Isaac. Isaac is a sign, it's a, an evidence that God can reverse the irreversible. Why? Because by the time the mother conceived him, the mother's womb had already died. Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 to 7. Genesis 21 from verse 1 to 7. Sarah said, who would have believed that Sarah would have a son? It's, that's why he called him Isaac. God made me laugh. I pray for every one of you here tonight. In all your homes, there will be constant laughter. Jacob is a sign that God can love you even before you are born. Romans chapter 9, from verse 10 to 13. Romans 9, 10 to 13. The Bible tells us that before Jacob was born, God had already said, Jacob, I love. Loved before he was born. Joseph is a sign that when God gives you a dream, the dream, no matter how ridiculous, the dream will come to pass. In Genesis 37, from verse 5 to 11, Genesis 37, from verse 5 to 11, Joseph had a set of dreams. The first dream is all his brothers coming to bow down before him. It was a very ridiculous dream, particularly when you follow the history, how he was sold into slavery, how he ended up in prison, how the people that he thought would help him forgot him. But in Genesis chapter 50, from verse 15 to 22, Genesis 50, 15 to 22, the Bible says when his father died, 
all his brothers came, fell down before him, and said, We are your servants. Let me use the language of my children. <laughs> uh, hear them say, I decree and declare. I think one of these days I will ask them where they got the declare from. In my own case, I simply decree in the name that's above every other name. Every dream God has given you will come to pass. Samuel is evidence that out of a barren womb can come a prophet. For Samuel chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. For Samuel 3, 19 to 20. The child Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and didn't allow any of his word to fall to the ground. And the whole nation knew Samuel had been raised up to be a prophet in Israel. Not only did he become a prophet, he became a kingmaker, the first kingmaker in Israel. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, all the way to 25. First Samuel chapter 10, from verse 1 to 25. Out of a barren womb can come a prophet, can come a kingmaker. I believe very firmly that of the people here gathered, somebody is going to rise up and become a prophet. I'm trying to be quick. John the Baptist is an evidence that a child can be a latecomer. You don't have to be the, the firstborn. Oh, God has a special place for firstborn. John the Baptist was a firstborn. But the parents were old. But according to Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, Matthew 11, verse 11, the Bible tells us, coming from the mouth of Jesus himself, that of all men born of a woman, there has never arisen a greater than John the Baptist. You can be a latecomer, I mean to the world. That does not mean you won't lead to. As a matter of fact, I decree concerning all my children, none of you will end small. Now, let me go to wonder. Don't worry, God will help me to say everything that needed to be said as briefly as possible. I will just give you two examples of children that are wonders. There are many others. Samson. You know the story? Judges chapter 30, from verse 1 to 25. Ah, oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, he said, because of your children, I will show you mercy. When Samson was to be conceived, 
An angel came and told the parents, you are about to have a child who will begin to deliver the nation. Allow me to decree that among those who are here tonight, there will be national leaders. By the time you read Judges chapter 15, from verse 11 to 16, John 15, 11 to 16, you see a man using the jawbone of an ass to kill a thousand soldiers of the enemy. That is a wonder. It is a wonder because if a hundred people rush at a man, even if he's carrying AK-47, he might be able to shoot and kill about 10 of them before the others will pull him down. But in this case, a thousand people ask yourself the question, what were they looking at when he was killing them? It was simply because God wanted to give us an example of a wonder. Before the end of this year, one of your children will achieve a wondrous feat. I check another example of a wonder, and that will be Mary. When you read Luke chapter 1 from verse 26 to 38, Luke 1, 26 to 38, you see a girl receiving a miracle that is unique, a virgin conceiving. Not only is the miracle unique, it is unique forever. Oh, there have been testimonies of the barren conceiving, testimonies of the dead being raised, etc., etc. But when you hear the testimony today, you hear another one tomorrow. We've heard of someone now who was barren for 32 years. It's most likely before the end of the year you will hear another one bigger than that. Please say amen to it. But only once have we ever heard of a virgin conceiving. It's a wonder of all ages. I pray for someone here today that the day you share your testimony, everybody will stand and shout. Everybody will say, we've never had this time before. Who is that fellow going to be? Your hallelujah should be the loudest. And then we have children who are a combination. A combination of sight and wonder. Maybe I will take uh, just two because of, of time. Solomon. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 12 from verse 24 to 25, 2 Samuel chapter 12 from verse 24 to 25, the Bible says when Solomon was born, God loved him. 
Now that is a sign that God can love unconditionally. You say why? The father had just committed adultery. The mother was an adulteress. Adulteress of the worst type that led to the death of her husband. And then the two of them met and gave birth to a boy. And the Bible said God loved him. I'm sure I've told you before, when I got to that passage in the Bible, I had to say to God, Daddy, please don't be angry. I'm your son. I just don't understand this one. How can you love this fellow? Then he asked me a question. <laughs> Is your mother the first wife of your father? I said, no more questions. I shut my mouth immediately. God can love the unlovable. I know some of you are born angels. Some of you have never done anything wrong before. You are... <laughs> You are holy from the day you were born. Congratulations. But there are some people like me, we were rotting until God found us and saved our souls and turned us to a vessel unto honor in his hand. If there's anybody like that here, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Solomon is a sign that God can love the unlovable. And then he was also a wonder. He was a wonder because when God asked him to ask for something, he asked for wisdom. It was a wonder. Because if this fellow, who knows that he wasn't wise, which means it was a bit dull. Had enough sense to offer a thousand burnt offerings to God. And then when God said, what do you want to return? He said, just give me wisdom. And the Almighty God turned around, gave him wisdom, gave him understanding, gave him wealth beyond imagination, gave him peace all the days of his life, gave him everything he never asked for. Solomon was a wonder. There might be one or two wonders here. I am one of them. I told you before, the day my father bought an umbrella, we celebrated in my family. I told you before, for the first 18 years of my life, I had no pair of shoes. But look at me today. It shows that when God wants to be wonderful, he can choose anyone. Is anybody here today Believing that before the end of this month, you will become a wonder. If you are that one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Solomon, the son of a terrible combination, was loved by the time he was born, and God turned him to a wonder. The other fellow that I will mention, who is a combination of signs and wonders, is the Lord Jesus himself. When you look 
look at Luke chapter 1 from verse 26 to 37. Luke 1, 26 to 37, you know the story. He was born of a virgin. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father. Let me say amen to this before I tell you. <laughs> Daddy says, stars differ from stars in glory. They ask me to tell someone, the glory of your son will be the greatest among the stars. Jesus was a sign that there is nothing God cannot do. That's why I thank God for one of the songs that the choir rendered. There is nothing God cannot do. There's one word that is never found in the dictionary of God. That's the word impossible. And those of you who are close to me and who have been with me for quite a while, you, you will have discovered that I too don't want to hear the word impossible. When we came here and one young man got born again and he said, I want to bring my friends to the convention but the convention was a week away. Where am I going to house them? <laughs> and the dormitories in those days were like, uh, as somebody described it, chicken pens. Just put some wood into the ground, put roof on top, and build wall up to a meter. That was our dormitory. <laughs> I do keep out the mosquitoes. We just ran the thing with mosquito net. But he was a big man. He looked at the dormitory and said, no, no, not me. I said, well, Shagam is not far away. He said, most of the programs will be at night. I said to him, we will build you a house if you bring the money. He said, money is not a problem. Hey, don't worry. I said, we will build you a house. He said, in seven days. He said, that's impossible. I said, ah, you have mentioned the wrong word. Seven days later, the house was ready. Oh, the engineer said, no, that house won't last. <laughs> it has no crack from 1983 to now. Not a single crack. And they said, oh, well, uh, it is because it's a story building. Eh. I said, fine. We'll show you what God can do. We built a not just a bungalow, they said it was a bungalow. We will build one that is not a bungalow. And we did it in 18 days. They say it cannot be done. Ah. Go to the school that they call RHS. You'll find the building there. No crack. All these years. Is there anything in your life that is looking impossible? As the Lord leaves, by the Holy Ghost service of next month, you will share your testimony. Jesus is a sign that 
there is nothing impossible with God. But then, of course, it's a wonder. <laughs> I don't need to tell you that. You have to be a wonder to be able to raise somebody who had been dead four days. John chapter 11, from verse 39 to 44. John 11, 39 to 44. That males have been dead four days, dead and rotten. He spoke a word. He didn't go into the tomb. He didn't lay hands on him. He just called him out. Spoke a word. And wonder of wonders, the dead came out completely alive. I speak a word to your life right now. Everything good in your life that the devil has killed will come back to life today. Ah. Jesus is a wonder. He submiss was submissive to death. He, 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 he said in John chapter 10, from verse 15 to 18, John 10, 15 to 18, he said, nobody took my life from me. I laid it down of my, of my own accord because my father loves me. That's a wonder. It's a wonder because he got the name that's above every other name, the greatest name of all. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, and I think I would love to say amen to this also. The Lord asked me to tell someone, he said, don't worry, your labor over your children will not be in vain. <laughs> now, the text we read said, I and my children before he mentioned the children, he mentioned the parents. Oh, thank you again, Lord. The Lord said, the fellow concerned with this particular one will understand. He asked me to tell you, Don't worry, I will rebuild. I and my children. Let's look at maybe just one parent who was a sign and a wonder before his children followed in the footsteps. I will take only David. David was a sign, or shall I say, is a sign. That when God decides to promote you, it will be without an end. God can promote you continuously, forever. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, 
from verse 11 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, 11 to 13, you know the story. Samuel came to Jesse's house to anoint a king. Nobody even remembered to call David forward, but uh, God had decided, this is my king, so they went to bring him from the bush. You know, some people never think you can become anything. But in the name that's above every other name, you will shock them. And then we moved on to 2 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. 2 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. David became king over Judah. Then we moved on to 2 Samuel chapter 5. Verse 1 to 3, 2 Samuel chapter 5, from verse 1 to 3, David became king over the whole nation of Israel. And then we move on to Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark 10, verse 46 to 52. The Bible says, Batmel said, Jesus, thou son of David. David moved from being a king among his own brethren to becoming a king over Judah, to becoming king over Israel, to becoming the father of the king of kings. Your promotion begins tonight. And it will continue steadily. Until we see Jesus in glory. Was David a wonder? Oh, you all know. <laughs> you know the boy who used a catapult to kill a Goliath. You know him, in the cave of Adulam, he was captain over a handful of vagabonds and turned them to mighty men. David was a sign and a wonder. No wonder then that Solomon coming after him became a sign and a wonder. But then don't let me spend much time. I think you've already had enough because I don't want the children to, to fall asleep before we got to them. There are two kinds of signs and two kinds of wonders. And I think I've shared that one with you before. Good wonders and evil wonders. That's why the Bible started by saying, and I and then my children, meaning if I am good sign and good wonder, then my children will also be good signs and good wonders. Let's take the example of Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 to 19. Genesis 18, 17 to 19. God said, can I hide anything from Abraham, knowing that this man is going to guide his children in the way of the Lord. Abraham, 
Abraham was a good sign, a sign that the Almighty God can reverse the irreversible, that He can make the old young again. Abraham is a sign that God is faithful, that when He promises, He will fulfill it. Abraham was a wonder. If you want to know how wondrous he is, read Genesis chapter 14, and you will see when the enemy captured his relative Lord, his servants alone were enough to form an army that rescued his brother from those who captured him. Abraham was not just a sign, it was a wonder. And then you will notice what then followed. In Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 18, Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 18, because Abraham was a sign and a wonder, he trained Isaac in the way of the Lord. When God said, go and offer Isaac as a burnt offering to me, on the way it was Isaac who reminded the father, Daddy, we can't go to worship God without an offering. Where is the lamb? You know the rest of the story. At the end of the day, God said, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. But as far as your children are concerned, I will multiply. When the father is good sign and good wonder, the children will automatically become good signs and good wonders. Why? Because when you train a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he won't depart. But then there is another side of the story. You consider Gehazi. In 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 20 to 25. 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 20 to the end. Gehazi saw that his master was more interested in miracles, signs, and wonders in being a vessel unto honor in the hand of God than in money. But he wasn't interested. Gehazi is, is a sign that it is possible for somebody to be sleeping and waking up with miracles and not be interested at all. Gehazi is a sign that we see in the world today. Many, many people who call themselves servants of the Most High God who are in it for nothing other than money. As it was then, it is now. And it became a wonder. It became a wonder because instead of getting double portion of anointing, he got leprosy. And the Bible said the leprosy came on him immediately. As soon as the master finished speaking, he became a wonder. One moment he was going into the presence of his master, Second moment, it was coming out covered in leprosy. And then, the Bible now says, the man of God said, the leprosy of Naaman will cleave unto Gehazi and his seed forever. Who you are plays a great role 
in what your children will become. If you are good sign and wonders, your children will become good signs and wonders. If you are an evil sign and wonder, God have mercy on your children. Unless God in his infinite mercy comes in through another myth, another means and get those children born again in spite of you so that they become brand new creatures so that they join the family of God. They will have problems. Before many of us met the Lord Jesus Christ, we were suffering under curses that have been placed on grandfathers and grandmothers or great, great, great ones. But God in his infinite mercy showed us the way to salvation and we left that line and moved into the line of Jesus Christ. So I'm appealing to those of you who are parents here tonight. If you know you are still living in sin, for the sake of your children, even if it's not for your own sake, for the sake of your children, come and give your life to Jesus Christ. Let his blood wash away your sins so that any evil cause that you have inherited or evil causes that you may want to pass on to your children might be wiped away by the blood of the Lamb. And as for you children, if you are already old enough to understand what I'm saying, even if your parents don't want to give their life to Jesus, come and give your own life so that you can leave the line of sickness, of sorrow, of uh, failure, of frustration, of almost succeeding and failing. Uh, it depends on the link that you have. Parents, for the sake of your children, if you have not given your life, come and do so. Children, if you are old enough to understand what I'm saying, even if your parents are not willing to give their lives, come and give your own. The Bible says if you are in Christ, you become a brand new creature. Then old things can pass away and all things can become new. That's why the Almighty God said something in Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 to 20. Deuteronomy 30, 19 to 20. He said, I am calling heaven and earth to bear witness that I have said before you blessings and causes, life and death. He said, choose life that you and your children may live. Your choice will determine what will happen to your children. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from one to ten. Come and stand before the altar and cry to Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul and we will pray and God will save your soul and you have a brand new beginning. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. Now those of you who are clapping, thank you. But remember, Jesus is not begging you to clap. So if you want to clap, you clap. If you don't want to clap, you don't have to worry. He has more than enough people who are clapping for him all over the world. Four. Hurry up, hurry up. It is, a, it is a, a great day of decision. If you are 
a child of the living God, oh, your children will end up well. If you refuse Christ, God have mercy on your children. Six. And if you children understand what it means, if there is a curse on the family and you don't get out of that line, it's likely to flow over to you, but you can break loose and begin a new line. Seven. I decree that those who are clapping today will always have something to clap about. I can see some of you very far away. Keep coming, keep coming. Don't stop. The Almighty God will honor your decision today. He will have mercy. He will have mercy. Praise Him. As the people are coming, they are coming from all over. Glory be to God. Nine. Now those of you already in front and those of you on the way, cry to Jesus Christ and say, please have mercy on me. I want to be for a good sign and a good wonder. Save my soul. Let your blood wash away all my sins. Lord God Almighty, I want to be for signs and wonders as well as my children after me. Save my soul, Lord. Forgive me. Let your blood wash away every sin in my life. Go ahead. Cry to God. Those of you on the way, just keep coming. You are not late yet. Make sure you get here before I pray. Keep coming. Keep coming. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them, that the Almighty God will have mercy on each and every one of them and wash them clean with his precious blood so that there be nothing at all to stand between them and the miracles, signs, and wonders of God. Those of you on the way, you have to hurry up now because I want to pray for salvation. But just keep coming. I know some of you are coming from a distance. Just keep coming. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. Yes, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father Almighty, we want to give you all glory and honor for your word. And thank you for all these people who have responded to the altar call. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Forgive all their sins. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls, O Lord. And receive them into the family of God. Every curse in their family, Lord, keep far away from them. And from this moment onward, anytime they call on you, answer them by fire. And let them from today become people who are for signs and wonders. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward tonight. I want to assure you by the grace of God, I will keep on praying for you. And so I'm going to need your names and your address. Uh, if you turn to your left, you see somebody there carrying a placard, follow him. He will take you to where some ministers are waiting. They will collect the information I need and they will bring you back very quickly. I will wait a little so that they will finish with you before we proceed further. God bless you. You can begin to go now. You can begin to go. God bless you. Counselors, will you please come and meet these people by the way so that you can attend to them very quickly. Thank you. Just thank God for every child. And then number two, you, you want to ask the Almighty God that those who don't have children yet, God will remember them tonight. So that by this time next year, they will bring their own children too. And number three, you are going to ask God if there's any curse in my family that is still destroying the family. That the Almighty God in His mercy will terminate it tonight. that God will help you to bring salvation to every member of your family so that the causes upon the family could be terminated. Then you're going to pray that God will turn you to a sign to your generation and a wonder to the world. Father, turn me to a sign to my generation and a wonder to the world. And then finally, you ask God to turn your children, if you have any, to signs. and wonders. If we don't have children yet, then you pray the prayer for your brothers and sisters. And God will turn your brothers and sisters to signs and wonders. The prayer will be for just 15 minutes. If you have children with you, 
you do your praying where you are seated so you don't become separated from your children. But if you haven't, if you didn't bring your children, or you just came as an adult on your own, the altar is open. And for 15 minutes, you can come, praise God, pray for the body, ask the generational causes in your family be terminated, And God will help you bring salvation to every member of your family. And God will turn you to sign to your generation, wonders to the world. And do the same thing for your children, brothers, and sisters. 15 minutes only, so pray with all your heart. All those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, by this time next year, your children will be here too. And in all our families, where generational causes are still ravaging, there will be an end tonight. And the Almighty God who saved our souls in His infinite mercy will empower us to bring salvation to every member of our family. He will turn each and every one of us to signs and wonders. We will be signs to our generations and wonders to the world. Yeah. If we do the same for our children yeah. and our grandchildren yeah. and great-grandchildren, yeah. if we do the same for our brothers yeah. and our sisters yeah. and all our relatives, Before the end of this month, there'll be something in our lives that will be a wonder. A good wonder to the world. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, oh, please go back to our seats so that we can now begin the anointing service for the children. As part of our teaching the children, when we bring the children forward for anointing, we put an offering in their hands. Let them learn from early in life that you don't come to God empty-handed. So the 
ushers will make arrangements so that as the children are being anointed, they'll be dropping their offering. Since we are all children too, as we are being anointed, we will do the same. Now, there are various centers so that we'll be able to finish on time for the anointing service. I'll be the front of the altar. There'll be a section to my right. There'll be a section to my left at the Yoruba section. And then there'll be a section right in the middle. So you locate where you see pastors standing ready to anoint. And of course there'll be some pastors who take care of the choir and so on. The oil had been prayed over and uh, we will begin the anointing service straight away as the choir will begin to worship the Almighty God. If you have not been anointed, you better hurry forward now because we are about to close. Uh, if you have not been anointed, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Okay. Uh, old auditorium, if you have not been anointed, wave your hand. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, pastors. Thank you very much. Now you are going to pray with confidence because of the anointing. You are going to command the devil and say, In the name of Jesus, Satan. Take your hands off my children. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Because of the anointing, I decree, Satan, to take your dirty hands off my children. Don't come near my children, they are anointed. It is written, touch not my anointed. Satan, I command you. Take your dirty hands off my anointed ones, my children. Sickness, don't come near my children. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Sickness, don't come near my children. Disease, don't come near my children. Death, stay away from my family. In the mighty name of Jesus, because of the anointing, I command you, Satan, take your hands off my children. Don't dare come near them at all. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Blessed be the Thank you, Master Father. Satan, take your hands off my children. Take your hands off my finances. Take your hands off anything that pertains to me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, take your dirty hands off me, off my family, of anything that pertains to me. 
Command you take your dirty hands off. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Well, let me sit here for just a, a minute or two. As is our custom, we want to thank God for what he has done today. Has anyone been blessed at all today? If you have been blessed, let God hear your shout of hallelujah. And so we take our thanksgiving offering we, with joy, we dance to the nearest basket, and then we pronounce the final blessings on us. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever evil the devil may be planning against your family is cancelled. And so, over to you, Ben. We took our offering down to the nearest basket and then we pray. The Lord I'm serving is good to me. 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 Oh yes, the Lord I'm serving is good to me. The Lord I'm serving is good to me. The Lord I'm serving is good. The Lord of Sabbath is good to me. 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 For two minutes, a 
there's anything specific you want God to do for you before the end of this month, go ahead, ask him now. Just two minutes. Something specific. Something that we know only God could have done this. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My Father, my God, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree that everything your children have requested for now be given them within a week. As a sign to the world that there's nothing too hard for you. Everything your children have asked for now, within one week, make available to them. When we meet next month, O oh Lord, let there be outstanding testimonies. Please receive the offering of your children. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that the enemy will stay away from the finances of your children. As your children will be going, I decree that every danger on the way be removed now. It shall be well with all of you. God will take care of you. He will take care of your children. And forever you'll be shouting for joy. Even before we meet again, there'll be open doors for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear you shout your biggest hallelujah so far.